guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig. It is nine o'clock, which means it's time for a talk magic. And today I am going to be interviewing somebody I cannot wait to find more about. Now, this person has been making waves recently. Why? Because he has just announced the Midwest Magic Convention, which is hopefully going to be Ireland's premier premium magic convention already it's only just gone on sale with the early bird tickets and they've already got some incredible names like jay sankey and michael finney quentin reynolds the list goes on and on and on this interview is going to be talking complete not just about the convention but also about leon and who he is because he's an incredible performer as well and i can't wait to find out more about him leon mr leon anderson how are you <laughs> I'm all good, my friend. I'm so uh, so excited to be here, actually. Thanks so much for inviting me onto your show. And uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, yeah. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. You're more than welcome. I am incredibly excited. I mean, I'm, I'm excited to find out more about you because we've known each other for a while, but I don't know you well enough to know your backstory and everything about you in terms of magic. So I'm excited about that. But I'm also a little bit later on, I'm excited to talk about the Midwest Magic Convention because this... I know you're so passionate about it and I know that you've got big plans and I can't wait to talk about it with you because I think it's going to be epic. Yeah, listen, it is, it's going to be like um, a mini a mini Blackpool. Let's just let's say that, a, a mini Blackpool. That's what we're going to try and have. A mini Blackpool, but with a lot more Guinness. Yes, good Guinness as well. <laughs> exactly, good. the good stuff, the good the stuff. best Guinness. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to talk all about that. But first of all, for people who don't know you, who you are and what you do, let's give them a bit of frame of reference. Leon, first of all, tell me about your origin story. How did you get into magic? What? When did it all happen? What, what did that all look like? Oh, listen, um, every time I hear this uh, question, I just feel like... Uh, it's exactly the same as every other magician. I was a kid, seven years of age, Paul Daniels was on the TV and I asked Santa Claus for a Paul Daniels magic set and I woke up Christmas morning and there it was, Paul Daniels magic set. And, and that's, how, that's how it went on from there. Um, learned a couple of tricks. I wasn't really a big reader back then and, and and not like now you have YouTube and you have videos and DVDs. Back then we only had books and I wasn't really a big reader. So I had to kind of just take the props out and kind of mess around with them myself and completely doing the opposite of what, what's in the book, but making it look like I, I was a magician. So um, I continued on doing that until I was around... Uh, 12, 12 years of age and I kind of went in other routes of entertainment. I was a professional dancer. I was in a boy band. Uh, not many people know that. know that. I toured all over Ireland and um, I had my first baby then when I was 17. So that kind of stopped everything there. And by the time I was 20, I had three kids. So I had three kids by the time I was 20 and I wanted to kind of get back into the entertainment business, but I was, you know, I was a dad now, so I couldn't be in a boy band or, a, and I was 20 and, uh, you know, so I remember David Blaine, I saw his TV special in 99 and I was like, oh, I, I can do stuff like that. Oh, I, 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 that looks familiar. I think I can do that. So that was it. I went to my local magic shop. We actually had a magic shop in Limerick where I'm from. And uh, I was so, we're so honored because it was probably one of the only kind of magic shops in Ireland at the time. Um, so, and it was on my doorstep. So I remember just going to him saying, and he had everything that David Blaine had, you know, everything on the shelf. He had a biting coin. He had uh, a raven. He had a, you know, the rising deck. He had an invisible deck. He had everything. I just spent a hundred quid and I was, I turned into David Blaine overnight, basically. And that was it. And I had a couple of friends still in the entertainment business. Um, and they were now managing like nightclubs and stuff like that. And I went to them and I said, I was literally two, three weeks doing all the David Blaine stuff because I wanted to hit it when it was hot. And I went to uh, my local nightclub, did a few tricks for the manager. And I got a weekly slot after two, two or three weeks to magic. So, um, 
Yeah, and that's that, and that's it. Basically, I just kept going and kept going and kept going. Wow. So, okay, let's unpack this. So <laughs> that was a lot. <laughs> there's a lot to talk about that. So let, let's unpack it. So first of all, um, did I mean? Did you find? I mean, obviously, touring in a boy band is incredible, right? Did you yeah. find that when that went away, you kind of you, you miss? I mean, do you still miss those days, or or do you? You know, is it really kind of magic has taken over? Yeah. So, um, magic was always magic was always my first love. Magic was always my first love, and I remember we were supporting. Um, there was a, an Irish magician on the circuit back in back in the early nineties called Peter Blackthorn, and he had a lovely illusion show, and for a long time. Uh, we ended up doing kind of similar gigs. So the boy band would come out and then he'd have the magic show and then there'd be another act. And then, and then I just remember watching Peter Blackthorn from this, from the wings going, Oh man, that's what I want to do. I wanted to be the illusionist. I wanted to saw the woman in half. I wanted to be that guy. Cause when you're in a boy band, it's your, it's your everybody, you know, whereas when you're a magician and you're on stage, the focus is on you, and that's that's really what I wanted. Yeah. Mm. Okay, that's cool. And when you when you decided to go back into magic, I mean, it sounds like you leapt into being a full time magician pretty much a couple of weeks after getting back into it. Um, yeah, yeah. Because I feel uh, sorry, Craig. Um, I feel because I had the entertainment. I was used of dancing in front of thousands of people. I had the performance. I had the, like, I was, you know, I was the showman. I was, that's probably the hardest part you got to learn when you become a magician. The tricks, you know, are tricks. It's the performer. That's what makes the magic, you know? And I was already a performer, you know? I was already, you know, performing. Um, but now I was just using the tricks that I was able to, and you know, your point, the kind, like you know, it's doesn't take doesn't take months and years to learn how to buy the kind, right? So, yeah. but it, it does take you. It would take you a longer time to have the showman, the the the, the actions, the facial impression. You know, that's what makes the magic. So, yeah. So I got stuck straight in, straight in. Well, on that point, what advice could you give magicians that are watching this? that want to improve the presentational side of their magic because the thing is a lot of close-up magicians especially that have never had any experience performing on stage they haven't had any training or anything in how to actually present so mm -hmm. you know a lot of them want to do better and want to actually present better and come up with better you know showmanship like you said it what what advice would you give a magician that wanted to do improve just um join your local acting acting school or um you know drama school i know it might sound cheesy and uh, i remember um you know jeff mcbride said it years ago jeff mcbride started as a mime artist and and that's what got him you know got him uh, you know his stage presence up and it's all about eye contact as well so being able to take your head up from the cards and make the eye contact make the just become the people's person, but it's not going. It's not going to happen overnight. You're going to need. You're going to need help with that. Um, and I would say, you're probably the best card magician in the world. You probably are. You're probably a million times better at cards than I am. So put your cards away for a while and just like you don't even have to join it now because YouTube. Like you can look up acting like videos on YouTube and you can, you know, but well, you know, I would definitely prefer you to go to your local drama school or, you know, dance school and just get that, you know, you know, get it. And I promise if you do that for a couple of months, your magic will become so much stronger. Your relationship with the public will be become just amazing. And you will be the guy that they want to go to because, Magic is not like um, what you do, it's how you make them feel, I think. And if a person feels like they're, you know, they're being um, entertained, then they would much prefer that than being um, made fool of, or, you know, being fooled. Does that yeah. make sense? Um, it really does, yeah. Yeah. 
That's really good advice. Really, really good advice. And you know, um, you said that you, uh, you you found a residency within a couple of weeks. You know, you got yourself yeah, into that. I was just, looking. Which is great. What did you, so, you know, you've made this decision to go full-time in magic and I know you've got the showmanship and you, you managed to find a residency, which is great. What would, I now, you, you obviously are one of the most successful magicians in Ireland. You know, you're regularly performing at weddings and corporates and so on and so forth. You don't want to work, Leon, you're doing great. So how did you go from, you know, getting a residency with a bite out coin to where you are right now? Did you have like a, a plan in place in terms of business or was it just wing it and go? How did you get there to where you are right now? So when uh, I remember in the nightclub, there was a hen night and um, I had I had three trick routines that I would go to. And back then we could smoke in the nightclub. So at the start, I would ask somebody for a cigarette, you know. Um, oh, no, I did the flash paper. Uh, yes, I pretended because everything was, everything was so, I haven't done it in a long time because it was so not loud and stuff like that. And I'd be just like, watch, watch, watch. And I'm rolling up the cigarette paper and I'm lighting it and I produce a cigarette and I give it to the person that I think is, they're, they're smoking light it up for them and they're smoking. So now I go and I do like a car trick, a uh, car routine and I'd finish up. So it'd be three, three routines for each kind of group. And then I would, as a, for my finisher, I'd pull out my, my silk hanky and I'd vanish the, the, the cigarette and that would be it, I'd be gone. But I did that for a hen party. And at the time, like I didn't realize that magic at weddings now this we we're talking about 2001 okay 2001 which is 22 years ago right i did this for a hen night and i have it on video somewhere i must root it out i have this on video somewhere because i had my ex-wife at the time my ex, ex partner and i got i rented a video recorder and we did it going around so i have this on tape somewhere and they were just screamed and they were like screaming, they were high five. And I was like, oh my God. And she goes, oh, you must come to my wedding. I was like, boom, now I'm a wedding magician, right? So now I was after getting booked. So now I'm going to do, so, and then I tried different things during the meal. I'm not a big fan of, but the reception and after the meal, I prefer not to do it during the, during the meal because it's a long day for guests. And if, you know, they're, they're like, they're drinking in the reception, which is great. And you can go around and do some magic there. But as soon as that bell goes for the meal, they're starving. They want to eat. The last thing I feel that they want to see is a magician going around asking them to pick a car whilst they're trying to eat their steak and, you know, stuff like that. So that yeah. that's just me personally. But that's how the business started. So then I became, or in Ireland, communions and confirmations it's huge. They're, they're like weddings. So I was able to put together um, a, a stand-up show uh, for kids and families. It's more of a family show rather than a kids show. And that's it, man. I just, that's, that's how it flowed. I was kind of um, bits, bits of everything, bits of everything. Wow. That's amazing. That's fantastic. Yeah. So is there, a, did, I suppose the, the next question is, I, I know you as a close-up magician, but do you, yeah. do, you, do you do stage magic as well? Because obviously your background of performing on stages in the boy band and singing and blah, 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 would mean that you're very comfortable on stage. Is that something that you, you push towards as well? So in 2006, so every, every three years we had, um, in Limerick, we had uh, a convention. It was the Munster Society of Magicians I was a member of. That's no longer together anymore. They haven't been together for, I think, the last convention. The last competition in Ireland was 2011 or 12 or something like that. I'll have to confirm that. So there hasn't been a competition in, in Ireland. But I, my first competition I entered, I entered as a close-up. And uh, that was in 2002 as a close-up competitor. And I messed up the 21 card trick. Right. 
because I have stories. I, I created stories around my 21 cartridge, right? And stuff like that. So it wasn't about the trick and I didn't, but anyway, it messed up. But in 2000, so that must've been 2003. In 2006, I actually did enter the stage competition and I came first. Really? And yeah, so I entered the stage competition, came first. I had a seven-minute act. It was actually Jeff McBride's commando act with a couple of little different things, things uh, that I that I added, and it went down a storm. So I got actually two awards that year. I got uh, Irish Magician of the Year, and I got uh, the Showmanship Award. So two awards for that for that act, and that came around again then in two thousand and nine. And that's when I won the IBM um, ring, ring, ring 25 or the Irish ring uh, magician of the year, the Irish magician of the year and the showmanship award. So I won three awards for that in 2009. So, and that was just a seven minute act that I, that I put together for the, for the stage, specifically for the stage routine, because I was watching them beforehand and, it's the same thing, you have this bag and you're pulling all these flowers out of the bags. And it just felt like um, the umbrellas were a big thing at the time as well, where they were just making a stage full of umbrellas. And I was like, surely to God, it's, it's better than this. It has to be better than this. Magic in Ireland has to be better than this. Like, you know, um, I felt like the acts were just bought. You know, you buy the trick, you go up on stage and you perform them. So when I got my hands, it was actually a good friend of mine, David Walsh. He said, Leon, he goes, I've got this video of Jeff McBride. It's called a commando routine. I definitely think it would suit you to the ground. I watched it. I fell in love. I learned it from back to front. I spent two years perfecting it. And then I did it for the, in 2006. And I, I stand an ovation from magicians when, when I first did it. So that's amazing. I have a video of that as well somewhere. <laughs> wow, that's incredible. Yeah. So that brings me to my next question, which is Do you have any advice on entering competitions? Because a lot of magicians, you know, they're kind of gearing up to enter competitions. It's something they want to do, but they've never entered a competition before. Performing to magicians is a totally different experience than performing to lay people. Yeah. Uh, somebody who's won so many competitions do you have any advice yeah um again it depends if you're entering the close-up competition or you're entering uh, the stage competition my advice would be the same as what i would give a while ago get some practice from like postmasters or actors you know and get your stage presence whether you're doing close-up or whether you're doing stage, you're gonna need stage presence. It doesn't matter if you're performing in a bar or performing in a competition. Once you get your stage presence up and you get more relaxed on front of the crowd because there's nothing worse. Remember when I was a kid and the teacher in the class, oh, Leon, it's your turn to read the book. And you get up and your, your, your body starts shaking and you're, you know, you. And all you have to do is read a couple of lines of a book and you just, your body will just break down. It's just about getting rid of those, those that anxiety about getting up and performing in front of, because I promise you the tricks, you already know the tricks. You're doing the tricks. I know you, you know the tricks, the tricks that you're performing for the competition. And don't learn new tricks for competitions. It's going to take you about 20 years to, to master that, you know, that trick so it's fluent so don't change your tricks do what you're already doing but just become a little bit more aware and make eye contact from people um my little man is just after waking up he's after getting a haircut <laughs> this morning say hi <laughs> say hi everybody <laughs> he fell asleep on the car coming home so <laughs> he's lovely here <laughs> so, want to go in this down Good boy. I take off the jacket. No, sorry, Craig. That's okay. Sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. Hey, it's nice to meet him. <laughs> Future magician right there. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so that's my advice. Go and get those classes in um, because it's going to make your magic stronger. 
That's great. Mm. Why, why did you enter competitions? What was your reason for entering a competition? Was it because you wanted... Yeah, I mean, I mean, well, you tell me. I mean, there's lots of different reasons to enter a competition. You entered so many, many, and did so well. What was your reasoning for doing that? I, I wanted to have a trophy. I wanted to have something that was for me. Um, that that was it. I wanted to have something that I say I did this by myself. I actually did this. I wasn't part of a group or part of a band. It wasn't anything like that. It was like, yeah, this is my mine <laughs> Amazing. That's, 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 right. that's pretty much it yeah and and when you're entering a competition do you have any advice on trick selection because obviously you talked about jeff mcbride's commando act which is a great act obviously that suited you it might not suit yeah. somebody else how do you find the best act that you go uh, to to do in a competition um it's like magic is more accessible now than, than we than we had, I suppose, Greg, because we didn't have um we didn't have YouTube, we didn't have all like we didn't have penguin magic. I remember having the Davenport's catalogue, a big huge red catalogue that, that we got. Um I got actually from a local my my magic shop, he said, Oh, you should have a look at this. And and basically, I studied that catalogue from start to finish. I don't know if you ever remember. Uh, mm, I do, Maybe yeah. I'm showing my age a small bit, but this thing was like a Bible. Oh, it was uh, massive, wasn't it? Red, it was huge. Red, um, yeah, and it was like just packed full of stuff. And right at the back was this new video selection. As I said at the start, I wasn't a big reader, but I learned a lot from watching other magicians so I bought a lot of video tips. Thirty pounds, I remember paying for a video tape, and and having to wait, you know, weeks for it to come. Um, but when I got it, I studied it. I played it back, played it back, played it back, and I just watched it. And okay, it's 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 very easy then to just. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. Well, he does. Yeah, he made it. He's made his first snowman yesterday. Sorry. <laughs> well, that's snowman magic in itself. <laughs> the snowman is still. He's not melting. No, he's not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, man. Don't um, worry about it, Leon. It's okay. Yeah. So, um, the, the tricks. It's it's very. It can be very easy to fall into learning other people's pattern and learn this is so important okay okay you have to that's what you have to do because that you're learning it. this is why it takes time it takes time then to tease that out and slowly but surely if you start build, learning about acting and learn about you start building up your own personality the trick will be the same but it's your personality is what's going to make that trick different so when when a magician puts out a trick to market. Yeah, use the patter, use use everything you can because you're learning that trick, but don't depend on that magician's patter when if you're entering a competition because it's going to see okay you're you're kind of like a robot. Whereas tease it out, tease it out, and then the trick still perform the trick, but you might be able to use your own personality then. And you might say something that the other magician didn't say, or just take that out, or you know, and add in something. And and that's it. It's all about your own personality. The tricks are tricks. There's nothing we can do about it. If I buy a trick, I don't know, the three card Monty trick. It can only be done that way. So you know, don't worry about that. You're doing the trick exactly the same way, but learn about doing it your way, with your style and your personality. That's yeah, it's, it's what it's all about. Amazing. Amazing. I'm going to ask you one last question before we get onto the convention, which mm. is, you know, we talked about how you went from uh, literally not really doing much magic to becoming a full-time pro. Uh, do you have any advice for anybody who's going full-time uh, in terms of, you know, they, they want to quit their job. They want to become a full-time magician. More and more people want to do that than ever before. Is there any sort of advice, as somebody who's been a successful professional magician for a long time, is there any advice that you can you can give people on that? Is there any, any advice? Man, I'd love to say, I'd love to say, just do it. You know, yeah. but it's so hard. 
like I had to keep a, a, my job as well as 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 everything else mm-hmm. because during COVID, I was so lucky that I, I was I was after picking up a full time job before that, um, because I would have had nothing. Yeah, uh, but now it's beginning to slowly come back around, and and it's 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 getting better. It's probably getting better than it than it was because I stayed active during COVID. With um, I set up another business called Quiz Masters, so I was doing quizzes online rather than the magic, and I was doing like music bingo for hen nights uh, online in my sitting room, you know, uh, during COVID. So I just kept you know, doing what I, whatever I could to, to make it happen. But you've got to think about it. Build up, build up your, get your website in order. Make sure it's ranking high. Make sure those, those emails are coming in. And don't, if you're going, if thinking about giving up a job, don't, I wouldn't. Maybe try and go part-time. And, yeah. and then, because, okay, like if you've got two gigs a week, I don't know, in Ireland, that's pretty much enough. Two weddings a week would be enough for a week, like a week's wages normally. I know, buddy. I'll get you, I'll get you something in a minute. But I wouldn't give up, I wouldn't give up um, my full-time job. I would maybe go part-time and try and juggle it then. Now, unless you're getting into corporate where you're getting maybe a couple of grand a gig, you know, and you're, and you're gigging, you know, 20 times a year, which doesn't really happen in, in the real world. You know, you're, you're, we're, we're doing 50 gigs and getting smaller, you know, we're getting, we're doing a hundred gigs and we're getting four or 500. So, you know, you just, you just have to weigh it up. Everybody is different. Yeah. Everybody is different. And I wouldn't, my advice is you just be very careful. I'm happy if anybody wants to email me, I'm happy to give advice because everybody is different. If you want to email me and say, Leon, listen, I've, I've, I've just watched your, your interview with Craig and I really think that, you know, you might be able to, I'll give you advice and I'll, I will call it as it is. I'll ask a bit more information about you and I will tell you you're bonkers if you're thinking of giving up that job to do this full time because it's so hard. Not in the UK it must be harder because there's lots more magicians and lots fantastic magicians in Ireland because we're so small we only have a population of five, <laughs> five million there's mm-hmm. more in Manchester than there is in the whole of Ireland yeah so you know we uh, we have to break it down there's a lot more weddings so we just have to you know we're we're just you know we're we're staying in our own patches and we're doing our own things and I'm passing jobs to Cork and I'm passing them to Galway and I'm passing them to Dublin and Waterford if I you know if I can't go but obviously I'm going to go if I can make it but we're all we're all passing our jobs passing jobs to each other over here which is great and and there's not that many professionals magicians in Ireland either so we're we're able to you know keep 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 ourselves busy really That's but right. it must be so hard in the UK I can imagine. Yeah, it, it can be. It can be. There's a lot of magicians, but there's a lot more people. So, you know, there's there's yeah. there's a lot more opportunities for gigs. And especially if you factor in all the different types of magic and, you know, holiday parks are a big thing as well. So, you know, there's... there's yeah, which there's we don't have a lot of. <laughs> yeah. So there's a lot going on over here. It's not so bad. It's not so bad. But yeah, it can be, it can be a struggle when people first go full time. Um, but that brings me to the Midwest Magic Convention. Yeah. And my question for you is, first of all, before we talk about it, what made you set up a magic convention? Because it's a blooming hard thing to do. And it's financially, it can be a bit of a risk if you're not careful. So, yeah. you know, what, what was your thought process there? I don't think I had one really. Um, <laughs> just going... I just love going to Blackpool every year. I love getting on the getting on the plane and flying over to Manchester and making my trip. The first Blackpool Magic Convention I went to was their 50th anniversary. And this year was their 70th. So I'm going 20 years barred one year that we didn't that that didn't happen. And 
all oh, that time I said, I'd love to do something like this in Ireland. I would love to have this in Ireland. You know, I'd love to have these acts. So I remember introducing myself to to a lot of a lot of magicians. I remember Aldo Colombini running through the crowd with a with a suitcase and a bag on his back, and he was dropping lecture notes, and he was saying, and I ran out of ran off my seat and I said. Aldo, I'll, you know, I'll give you a hand. Where are you going? He goes, I'm, I'm going up to the lecture. So I grabbed one of his bags and ran up. And I remember what he said to me. He goes, um, where are you from? I said, I'm from Ireland. And he goes, 3,000 magicians here and takes an Irishman to give me a hand. Yeah. And I was like, you know, and we became friends after that then. And I didn't really do it for anything, but he just gave me every, one of everything that he was saying. He goes, there for you, you know. And... How I met Jay Sankton was, I remember in Blackpool. Yeah, one second. Yeah, yeah, but no, no, I'm gonna sit down. Sorry, Chris. Don't worry about it. This so, is the best this, interview this, ever. I'm loving this. <laughs> this is a true story. This is, true. and you know, when I'm in Blackpool and I have friends around and we're in, the, we're sitting in the bar and I tell all these stories. I swear to God, I was making them up. I always have this. This is a true story. This is a true story. And uh, J- Jay will actually will te- will will vouch for this as well. So first time meeting Jay Sankey, obviously had his videos, had his uh, coin stuff um, from years and years ago. It was packed. I mean, Spanish Hall was just bonkers. Just all looking at this small little guy on stage with his big, huge personality. Everybody wanted a part of it. So outside, he's there and he's signing his autographs. And it was a, there was a crowd around him, about 10 deep. And I shouted just from the top of my voice. I just shouted, Jay! And he says, yeah. I said, would you like a drink? And he goes, yes. So I went over and I bought a bottle of cider. So loads of ice, a bottle of cider. And I gave him half of the bottle. And I made my way in and I said, sorry guys, sorry guys, just give this to Jay, just give this to Jay. So I put my hand out from the crowd with this big, big pint glass of ice and, and, and Bulmer cider. And uh, I said, Jay, that's for you. And I have the bottle, I'll just be sitting over here when you're finished, we can ha- we'll have a little chat. And I swear to God, when it all died down, he came over to me with the glass he popped up his, and we stayed there for about two hours whilst everybody was gone to the next lecture. Wow. And we became, we became friends like that. And I think that type of atmosphere I, I loved. And, you know, I just wanted to be part of a convention. And I wasn't a member of any society. Or, you know, the Munster Society were gone. And I was just, for years, I was thinking, every year I'm coming, I'm like, I'm meeting new guys, Michael Lamar. Michael Amar's um, wife, Hannah, her, her mom was a famous magician and she actually was in Limerick doing a magic convention in the eighties. And I got the brochure, I had the brochure. So I brought that with me one year. And when Michael Amar was there, I said, oh, Mike, I have a gift for you. This is your mom-in-law. And she was a big poster of Hannah Amar's mom on the back and I said, this is a gift for you. And me and Michael Lamar became friends. We emailed. He gave me a quote for a trick that I released a couple of years ago called um, Facelift with Penguin. Exclusive. Um, it took me 10 years to release that because I wanted to get all the all the dots and get all the stuff out of the way. Is a very a Luber Fielder's um, a trick by Luber Fielder. I know I'm going off on one, but I remember. No, no, please do. I'm, Facelift. I'm, even facelift on penguin magic yeah um it's still available it's only a tenor um but this is one of those tricks where this the where the um the gimmick is better than the trick it's just it was just brilliant i remember emailing luber feeler saying listen uh, luber uh, before he passed away um i said look i i love that trick called fantasy something fantasy um it'll come to me in a second i said look i made a variation um i hope you don't mind and i hope and he said no that's nothing like mine you can only change two cards with yours your gimmick with my gimmick you can change four 
So that was like, okay, I'm, 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 I'm off the hook here, so I can release it. So I and and it took me that long to get the go ahead, kind of to to release this trick. And yeah, it went to it was num number one on Penguin there for a while. Uh, tricks under ten bucks, so hopefully right. we might sell a few more of them now. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm going to go check that out. I've never seen it. That's yeah, I don't think you, I don't think you ever did a review of it as well. I'd love for you to review it if you if you. <laughs> Heck yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. I've never even heard so, of it. And, that, and that brings me to the convention now in November. So two guys. So in 2009, when I the second competition in Limerick, um, Michael Finney was there and he was a judge in the competition. So we became friends because of that. I actually met him on the street. I said, oh, my God, you're Michael Finney. It was, the sun was splitting the rocks. It was in the middle of May or the start of May. And I brought him to the castle, I brought him and we became friends. And I have a lovely message from him um, when I asked him to come over for the, for the convention. I'll, I'll show it to you when, when we're off air, but it's really, really, really nice message from him. So that's what I did for, for 20 years, just built up relationships with, with magicians and not really about trick wise or wanting anything from them. It was all about me, I was giving them something when I met Michael Amar, I gave him the you know brochure with his his mother-in-law on the back, and um, that he probably never seen. When I met Jay, I, I gave him uh, you know uh, a, a drink. And um, when I met you know uh, Aldo Colombini, I helped him you know carry stuff. It was all about giving, not really wanting anything in return, but knowing someday I'm going to run with this convention. And I'm going to call in all these favors from all these guys, and and yeah, that's what's that's what's happening. Amazing. So, yeah. tell me about it. So it's 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 a full on convention. It's running a couple of days, right? So it's not yeah. just uh, it's not just it's not just a one day convention. It's running a couple of days. Talk yeah. to me about what's happening, what's going on, who you've got on. Tell me everything. Yeah. So um, the acts that are already confirmed are uh, Jay Sankey, Michael Finney. They're both doing a lecture and they're both doing master classes as well. OK. Oh, OK. And um, Jay Sankey has limited it to 20. Michael Finney has limited it to just 12. He wants this to make it ex really exclusive. So if you ever want to learn a rope routine or learn how to mix comedy with magic, because Michael Finney has a whole other DVD with, with, with no tricks at all. It's just all comedy. So how you can bring comedy into your, into your act. And he, if you want to learn a really cool rope trick, um, <laughs> you can, you can uh, he is the best rope trick on the market. Like, oh, I agree. And, uh, and then we have yourself who's uh, agreed to put together a, a wicked new lecture. Brand and you can talk, and I'm hoping that you'll you'll talk about your corporate uh, experiences, your ups and your downs, and I'm hoping you, you know, give us a little bit of insight. And okay, it's an hour again. It's not. We're this is going to be such a relaxed weekend of we're not tied to an hour. We're not tied to you know where we're somebody else is coming on and after you or you know that rush that you get from other conventions. It's just going to be so relaxed. Have a drink, sit down, have a chat, questions and answers, and bring it back to where, where it used to be, the old school stuff, you know, mm -hmm. um, because a lot of these lectures as well can, as you, you probably agree, I hope you do agree, it's not just me, that some of them can be just dealer dems. This is what I'm selling. This is a trick. I'm selling it outside. Here's another trick. I'm selling it outside, where they don't really tell you anything personal they don't let you in on those little nuggets those little gems where that you pick up that one little bit of information where that one time when somebody did not lock the door in front of you but you were able to find another way in you know that type of stuff that's the stuff that oh, I want to bring it back to because that type of stuff you can't get anymore you can get the tricks but you can't get those little bit of life lessons though for a professional magician that yeah. little nugget where you can, you know, we we don't need any more tricks, I think. We don't need, we just need that little bit of advice that we can take our own magic mm -hmm. and bring it to the next level. And that's what I want from this weekend. So you're going to be there. 
Quinton Reynolds, which is, he's a premium children's entertainer um, and, you know, a stand-up, uh, you know, a talker. And again, life lessons. He's been around. He's been, he's done some, and those are the type of stuff, like, I'm hoping that I'm going to be there and I'm going to be at all these lectures. I'm going to be asking, tell us about this, tell us about this, because they're the ones that I want to get at. Um, and Jamie, Jamie Williams is there. So I met him at Blackpool and um, he's thicker, sticker, just blew me away um, trick. And yeah, so he's, he's coming on over. And then we have uh, Roiland as well, who is, is, is basically my little ambassador for the, for the kids uh, of Ireland. So I'm so happy that the both of you are coming along. Oh, and, he's super excited. Uh, and listen, it's run over at the moment. It's it's Friday, Saturday, and Sundays with not much happening on Friday at the moment. So everything is on Saturday and Sunday. But I'm going to slowly add at the Sunday evening. It's just for dealers that want to come over. If they want to set up on the Friday, they can. And we'll just have a relaxing night. I have entertainment. I have an Irish band already booked for the Friday night. They're going to come and they're absolutely amazing. But we might squeeze in a, a little late night lecture from, I have somebody in mind. I won't announce it yet, but um, I'm hoping he can come along. And he's a, he's a fellow Limerick man, but lives in the UK. I'm not going to say any, much more than that. Wow, okay, that might, that's interesting. Might be, hmm. might be interesting. I'm hoping that he'll, uh, he will come on board. And... Um, yeah, so I just want I just want everybody to come visit Ireland, fly into Shannon. The hotel is 20 minutes away. If you book your flights now, you can probably get them for 40 euro, 40 pounds return. Like, you know, it's bonkers, you know. Um, the points, you're going to get the best point to Guinness ever, ever, right? And just pity your wife or your husband when you get home after drinking all the Guinness because <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. That's it's, amazing. It's and, and a couple of other things I want to ask about it as well. So you've got the the gala show. So you've mentioned a few times a gala show. I mean, yes. Wow, you know that. So I'm just trying to get everybody everybody that comes uh, to do a little slot there. Basically, just again, I want everybody to be happy. Everybody to be. Um, the gala show will be open to the public. Um, so that's my big thing. So I'm I'm actually going to open it to the public. The the venue can seat around six hundred. So if I'm aiming to get to two, there'll be 400 basically open open to lay, the lay audience. So um, I just think that would be add a little bit more of, um, of an atmosphere to the place. Plus the competition on the Saturday night, the kids, the family entertainer of the year um, will be, will be um, magicians, but also public as well, all right? The public, this is what I'm working on, so during my quizzes, there was an app that I could download, right? That when I was doing my quizzes online, they download an app and answers would be, if it doesn't matter where they are in the world, they answer, the quickest come first and all this kind of thing. So I'm going to try and incorporate that software that's already there. But instead of questions, I'm going to put magicians. I'm going to give the public a chance, not just magicians voting on who's going to be the best family entertainer, it's going to be voted on by the public. So the public are going to say, who did you think was the best kids family entertainer? And we're going to go on that and they're going to just choose their answer and hopefully come up on the screen and every, we'll have one winner. That's amazing. That's great. And you've got, so a, again, you've got a close up yeah. competition. You've got so a close -up. go on. Sorry. Yeah. You go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, so close-up competition again. Close-up competition is a bit more technical, so I'm gonna I'm gonna leave this up to the magicians to judge this. Um, I'm gonna try and get your, yourself. I haven't asked you yet to judge. Anything and you need me to I'm do, gonna yeah. try and get uh, I'm gonna get Jay to, to judge, and I might judge myself on this one because I won't be looking at the tricks. I'm gonna be looking at how your performance is. Because I feel the competition has to work, has to, you have to have everything. To be, call yourself the top or the number one, you have to be 
you have to make that eye contact. You have to be that person, uh, magician that that makes the audience feel not that they're being tricked, but that they're being entertained. And that's so important. So I won't be looking at the tricks. I'm not that technical myself. I have the worst top ham, one-handed top ham in the world. Every time I try it, I get caught. All right. So I, I'm I'm not that technical. I'm going to leave that up to, to you guys, but I'm going to be watching for other stuff. I'm looking for other other angles, um, small little things like uh, how you dress. I know that might be, but you know, you dress to to your audience. I always find you got to dress to your audience. So if you're doing a wedding, going in a hoodie, um, you know, isn't the best, right? But if you're doing a street show, and you're getting booked to, yeah, maybe you can get away with the hoodie and the leather jacket and you can walk in there. So that's fine. So you just have to, you know, you dress, dress accordingly. And if you're entering a competition, I'd like you, you know, to I'll leave it up to you. I'm not going to tell you how to dress, but there'll be there'll be marks on there'll be marks on on your presentation, um, the presentation of the trick as well as yourself. Sounds you know, great. So. Yeah. And, then, and then I know I have a lot of people watching this channel that are younger. Yeah, you've got the junior yes. competition as well, right? Yeah. So, again, I, know, I just want to announce this as well. Um, like, if you're under 14, it's free. You just your, your parent just has to pay. You just got to tell your parents, Mom, I want to go. This, this magic, con it's actually free. I don't know of any other convention that offers free for under 14s. Like, I just want kids to, you know, get out of their, their bedroom and off the, off the YouTube just for, and be, be part of something. Like, the guys that you're probably watching on YouTube are going to be here, you know? They're, you know, so just come down, say hi. Yeah. It's, it's such magic, is such a fantastic community of people. Like, the amount of people that I've met through magic i've met david blaine i've met darren brown i call keith barry a friend you know um i like you're just you if you were into football the chances of you ever meeting ronaldo and david beckham probably never but you magic is one of the like communities where you can actually be sitting down i remember meeting david blaine i was set at the front as he wanted, was lecturing in in um, in Blackpool, and my friend just left the front. He said, "I'm going to the toilet," and I heard a load of hustle and bustle behind me, and it was David Blaine. He sat right beside me, right at Blackpool Magic Convention. He sat right beside me. I was gob gobsmacked. And Steve Gore, I remember to this day, got off his seat and said, "I'll take a photograph of you." And he took a photograph and I still have that photograph. That wouldn't have happened because I wouldn't have had it in me to ask for a photograph. But because Steve was there, he was probably sitting behind me or sitting beside me. Steve took that photograph and sent it on to me. And now I have a photograph with David Blaine. Like, wow. Amazing. Amazing. The guy that, that I, TV special I saw when I was just starting kind of in my professional career. So yeah, it's bonkers. It's bonkers. And that's what I want that. I want that. Feel. I want that community back in Ireland that we haven't had in 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 a few years. So that's amazing. That's amazing. I can see how passionate you are about it. And for yeah. any kids that are watching this, um, they can do anything, right? It can be close up. It can be stage. They can do anything. Yeah. So they can do anything. Whatever. They, whatever they trick. The trick that they want to perform. Whatever it is. Whether it's um, a dancing cane, a Rubik's cube. Uh, 21 card trick that was my first trick when I started uh, if they want to do that again we're not particularly looking at the tricks anymore we're, we're looking at the overall it's got to be everything it's got to be everything for me it's got to be everything if you get up and you're doing a fantastic trick but you're a robot I'm going to give it to the kid that's coming up with the with that personality who's trying to make you know trying to make it you know happen for for everybody in the audience you know so that's that's what we're looking at and we're not looking at just the tricks we're looking at everything that's and some great. kids are funny some kids are funny 
Well, I mean, when you talk Ireland, you know, one of my favourite magicians that's hilarious is Aidan McCann. Yeah. Little Aidan is hilarious. And I know I know of him. I haven't had the chance to meet him yet, but I'm hoping he, he's watching this and he can come on down and, and let's let's just have a party. He's, he's good friends with Ryland. He's a he's a little legend, that kid. Yeah. <laughs> and there's, an, uh, there's another kid as well, Killian in Ireland. He's he's Killian making... is amazing. Killian's got a very bright future ahead of him. He's uh yeah. another good friend of Ryland's and yeah, he's yeah. Sure, there's not that many many kids, you know, so they're all in a nice little bubble there. I, I see them in Blackpool all the time, and it's, it's brilliant for the last couple of years. I suppose since, um, uh, what's the, uh, Ross Stevens' grandchild, what's her name? Um, uh, Izzy Simpson, yeah. Izzy, since Izzy, Izzy just exploded that for her, and what she's done for kids' magic, I suppose. Oh, yeah, uh, she, she's, um, yeah, she laid the... Uh, she laid the path so. for everyone else to follow, you know? Yeah, I think so. I think so. And I got an email from um, a, a kid called Steve down in, down in Cork. It's about a two hour, about an hour and a half, two hours drive from, from the convention. And he's hoping to, um, to, uh, to enter the competition as well. So hopefully we'll have a, lots of kids around. That's what, that's what we want. Just the future of magic. We just need them to, just get out there and just perform, like you know, like this. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. Future magic star in a couple of years are looking at it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Amazing. So, Leon, where can people go to get tickets? How long is the early bird ticket still going for? Uh, and uh, what are the dates and costs and everything? So, the, the early bird, uh, the early bird tickets at the moment are ninety nine euro, and um, they will go up to one hundred and thirty nine. Um, in a couple of weeks so i'm going to give people a chance to uh to just avail of the early bird tickets i just want to great listen i'm just going to put this out there as well i'm not in this to make any money i just want to cover what it's going to cost me so um you know at the moment i need about 200 people to um for my wife not to kick me out of the house um at 99 if if we're not getting that then have to increase the price a small bit just which defeats the purpose i know but it's just bonkers um we just have to i just want to just i just want to make it happen and you know i just want to cover what it's costing me to I mean, win the price that you're asking is incredible considering like just michael finney and jay sankey alone are two huge names just the fact that they're associated with the convention and the master classes and everything i mean it's yeah yeah it's incredible. Yeah. yeah. So listen, um, if anybody's out there and they're thinking about thinking about coming to the convention, just click on the link. I'm I'm sure you you'll have a link below somewhere. Just click on and get get your get your tickets in. And I just added this morning, would you believe? I just added a um a donate button. All right. I know I hate doing this, but if you feel like you can't make it or you just want to just donate something small, five, ten, doesn't matter, you, can, you know, buy me a pint, a fiver, um, just click it down. Just everything is just going into making this weekend a success. And um, I promise you, like, if it's, it is a success, I, I'm already talking with unbelievable guys for next year. Like, you know, I mean, like, I mentioned his name already. I'm not going to say any more, but I have like he is he's one of my favorite magicians of all time. And I like I'm in talks with him for next year, you know, wow. 2024. So I really just want this to work. I'm I'm passionate about magic. I've loved magic since I was seven, since I was a kid. And I just want to, I just want to be involved in magic in Ireland as much as I can. And I hope this just helps young kids, young magicians, 13, 14, 15 young guys that, that are wondering what they're going to do with their life and they don't want to do this or they don't want to do that, but they might be good at like standing up in front of a crowd and doing a couple of tricks. It's actually quite good money to be made in it if you're good as well. So um, just I just want to be that guy. I want to be that guy who say, 
I, I saw Paul Daniels when, when I was a kid. I want a, I want a kid to say, oh, I saw Leon Anderson on, on YouTube doing a convention and that's what got me interested in magic. That's that's all I that's all I want from this convention is just that's great. Just to cover the cost. <laughs> That's right. You know what? I, I know it's going to happen. You've got an incredible, it's the old expression, isn't it? Build it and they will come. And you've got an incredible lineup. You're so passionate about it. And Ireland's a beautiful place. Uh, I know the hotel is fantastic. I think it'll be a fun, uh, and it's a good time of the year. It's November. It's just before December. I, it, it's going to, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. Yeah. yeah. I hope so. Fingers crossed. Absolutely. Well, Leon, this has been an incredible interview. Thank you so much for jumping on Magic TV. I really appreciate it. I can't wait to come over and see you in November and be a part of the convention. I'm honoured that myself and Ryland have been asked to be a part of it. And seriously, I want everybody who's watching this to go and book tickets. Go and book tickets. Go check out the website. Go and come over book. for the crack. Come over uh, for the crack. It's and uh, be, Craig, yeah. actually, you don't you don't know this, but I'm giving you two complimentary tickets that you can um, you can raffle off uh, on on your site as 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 much as you as you as you want in whatever way you want. Don't just give them away. Get them to do something, you know, to for to earn, earn the two tickets. So it'd be two adult tickets, um, or two adults and two kids, because the kids are free if they want to do that, um, or one adult and one junior, or one 14 to 13 or so, it doesn't matter, whatever, whatever, whatever they want. So two adults, if they have four, uh, two kids under 14, they can come along. Um, so, Amazing. yeah, Amazing. So that's for you. Look, yeah. look out for those. We're gonna make people do something really awesome in order to get those tickets, because those that's a great prize. Thank you so much, yeah. Leon. I didn't even know no about bother. that. No bother, wow. they're, they're for you. Thanks, man. And, and, and thanks for all you're doing as well in the magic community. I want to say, take this opportunity to say thank you. Um, like, I don't know if you know that, but there's a lot of magicians from Ireland that do watch you. Like, and when last week, when you meant, I think you mentioned the magic convention in one yeah. of your posts, um, it was another Irish magician that, that actually emailed me and said, Leon, Craig is after giving magic convention a shout out, you know, you should, should work with him and try and do something. So, and that's what that's what's led, led to those two tickets. So I want to, um, Jack Wise was the guy there. I want to thank him for giving me that, putting that into my head. And it, it, you can thank Jack Wise as well. For, oh, for thank you, tickets. Jack. And I will be raving about this over the next six months. People are going to be sick to death of me talking about this convention because I am very excited. I'm doing a lot of conventions this year, and and this is one that I'm most excited about. So. Uh, and I've got something very special planned. And so has Ryland. Ryland has got something very special planned as well, because I know you want him in the gala show. He's got something yeah. very, very, very special. He's going to be doing something that's never been seen before. So we've got, we're, we're coming, we're coming, Leon, and we're bringing our A game. And we we're just going to clear, just clear up uh, another thing with Ryland and the competition. Um, Ryland is going to be the ambassador for the competition. All right, so he's not actually going to be competing in the competition. Maybe I need to just look at the wording on, on the side properly, but he's going to perform at the competition to hopefully give, give a bit of a boost to the kids that are going to be entering the competition. Roiland is going to be actually one of the judges, and he's actually the, the ambassador for the kids' um, competition in, in Ireland, you know, so Ireland, England, you know, we're small, small, we're the nearest, you know, neighbours, we have to look after each other, especially in I the agree. Magic. Gotta, I agree. I agree. I love other. Ireland. My, uh, for many years, for 20 years, my sister lived in Ireland, so I've been over there many, many times, so I love Ireland, so yeah, 100%. I can't wait really to have you back. Any excuse to go over there and have a crack is worth it with me. I'll be, I'll be there 100%. So, I want everyone else to come, Links down below, book the tickets, come along. It's going to be an amazing convention. But Leon, thank you for sharing your experience. Thank you for uh, answering all of my questions. I really appreciate it. And uh, and yeah, I will see you again. If not before, I'll see you in November. Cheers, brother. No problem. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Leave a, comment, leave a comment down below. Let Leon know what you thought of the interview. And uh, yeah, if you get a chance, please come along to the convention in November. It's going to be amazing. Link down below in the description. I'll be back again soon with another video. But thank you for joining me. On behalf of Leon Anderson, we'll see you again soon.
My name's Craig from Magic TV, and that is Leon. Cheers, guys.